What I wanted to talk about very briefly were three tips, that's it, not five, not 10, but three tips that will help you survive a street fight. I've been doing a lot of boxing stuff recently and I realized, man, this is great stuff that I can incorporate if I have to, unfortunately, get into a street fight. Now, obviously, you don't wanna get in one at all. At all costs, you wanted to avoid them, uh, but it's better to have some level of confidence and some level of defensive skills if you have to get involved in a street fight. Uh, versus not having any at all, of course. Somewhere between doing nothing and the last resort of pulling a gun, like you know, most of my channel is on. So let's talk about three tips we're gonna go into real briefly today. Let's get started. So the first tip that I have is make sure you manage range. Range is the distance between you and an opponent. If you are in a fight, you wanna make sure that you are managing where and when the fight takes place. If someone is too close, if they're within range, then they're gonna be able to put strikes on you. And even if you block them, it's going to hurt. You don't have gloves, you don't have pads. If this is just something, a confrontation in the street, you don't wanna get touched at all because they may hit you with a watch or with a ring and it might break something, break an arm or open up a cut. You don't want those things. So you wanna stay out of range. You wanna be constantly moving. You don't wanna be a stationary target. You wanna be somebody who's really very challenging to get a bead on. So continue to move, but manage range. What you can see in these clips here is me staying away from the heavy bag, basically a little bit longer than an arm's reach away from the heavy bag. Uh, and especially, you wanna make sure that you're going to their left, uh, basically their weak side, really, uh, and not to their strong side where they can load up and, and connect with you. You wanna stay at, at range, maybe do a couple of feints here and there, fakes and stuff, but you wanna stay at range. If they advance, you come back or you circle out mostly to your right if the person has a traditional stance with the left in front, right in the rear. Tip number two, this kind of piggybacks on the first tip. And what you wanna do is you're managing range, you're managing range, boom! It's called sticking and moving, as the old folks like to say. You get in, you get your licks in, and you get back out of range. The longer you're in their range, like we said before, the more opportunities they have to strike you. So you wanna be at range, you're gonna be bouncing, moving, not being a stationary target, bam! Maybe get a combination, bam, 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 and you get it. So that's tip number two. The last tip that I got for you is to keep your hands up and your chin down. You hear about the chin in boxing a lot, and here's why it's significant. If you get hit on the head, right where near your brain is, it's gonna hurt, you probably get out of your car and have hit your head before, probably walking under your garage and hit your head and like, oh, that really hurts, but it didn't knock you out. Well, if you had been hit with that same force on your chin, because there's distance between the chin and the brain, there's basically a force moment going on and it's a force multiplier, essentially what it comes down to from the physics standpoint, and your brain will hit the front of your skull or the back of your skull and rattle around which causes a concussion and can knock you out. And that's what you want to avoid. And so you want to keep your chin down, not like this, because there's not a whole lot you could do. It's hard to see anything above here, but you want to keep your, your chin reasonably down and your hands up. When you have a fighting stance like this, you know, some people try to do all this stuff. No, 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 you're going to get hit. Remember I told you, you don't want to get touched at all, but you want to be able to have everything close and tight right here. You want to be able to protect the outsides with the, from the looping hooks and wild and crazy shots. You don't want to get hit back here because this is going to either knock you out or really set your equilibrium off. Uh, you don't want to get hit behind the ear. That's how Anthony Joshua got beat when he fought uh, Ruiz the first time. I think it was in 2019. He got hit here and he was done. He had the, the donkey legs or the, the baby horse legs and it was over. The great thing about this type of defensive posture is because anything coming straight down the middle, you just gotta, you could call it or you just have to turn. So really anything, there's a lower shot, you just gotta rotate down, rotate down, you gotta rotate over, rotate over, and you're right there. And so it gives you a good balance between being ready to fire, bam, 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 and at the same time being able to protect yourself if an enemy does get within range. So those are my three tips. I didn't wanna give you guys too much because it's gonna to be too hard to think about during an actual fight. Three things though, man, I gotta stay at range. Oh, I gotta keep moving, keep moving. Boom, boom, okay, good. And you should be good to go. So God bless. Let me know if you guys have any comments, any other tips that you guys like to share with other people. If you have any other videos that you'd like me to make as it relates to hand-to-hand -hand combat, let me know. I would love to do so. Stay safe. We'll talk soon, peace. Hey, in the sky.
switching time zones The clouds open up for me She got super size A&T alumni I only do the doors if they suicide Chinese wings with the